Okay. I've managed to grab David Graham, the CEO of Amon Sale, Isa Ali Smiley, right now the director of logistics. Is that right? Project manager. Project manager. Fair enough. Same thing in the world. Yeah. <laughs> you do whatever he's doing, right? Yeah. Um, but guys, listen. I, you know, I, one of the comments that we've 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 made on Sailing Anarchy, and one of the uh, the things that is a surprise in this world is to see a sailing project that has not only the full support of the government, but is really focused and really professionally done um, uh, in, in almost like a like a military agency. I mean, you guys you guys have this multi-pronged attack. Uh, you have all these different boat projects that are going around the world and winning races and so on and so forth. I'm going to stop this. So you have this multi-pronged attack with a uh, 100-foot trimaran, a 110-foot trimaran, um, uh, you know, lasers here with, with hundreds and uh, apparently 100 kids a week that are coming through your school, uh, extreme 40s, what, two of them, entire teams um, that you're carting around the world. This is a very big program. Where is this power coming from? Where is this will coming from? Where's the motivation coming from? Go ahead, Isa, go ahead. Well, go ahead. To, to start up basically with, uh, with the project starting up, uh, tracking back down to history, I mean, Oman has been always a sailing uh, country. Uh, it always had a sailing heritage in it. We used to sail for a purpose of trade. And that's where the vision, the uh, motivation is to bring back the sailing culture, the sailing heritage back into Oman, but now with the new standards, basically. Coming back in the old times, we used to sail for purposes, which is trade. Now we sail as well for another purpose, which is to bring back the old heritage, uh, promote Oman as a destination, has taken Oman to the world, taken, instead of bringing the world to Oman, we take the world to Oman to the world, as well as training young, young Omanis uh, to become professional sailors and to be part of the international scene and take part in international events and make them understand teamwork, uh, create the team building in them uh, and just make them better men and better women. So. Do you and do you think, I mean, is there enough? So, so that kind of project, that kind of idea, it takes a long, long time. And I, I don't know what your time frame goal is, but it's got to take 25 years of hard effort to actually make a difference in, in a country. I mean, is this going to go on for long enough that it's, uh, you know, or, 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 is, or is someone in the government who makes the decision or the sultan, sultan or, or the minister of tourism one day just going to say, well, it was a good idea, but we're done? I think uh, you're right. I mean, it's a, it's sustainability of this project is a, uh, is a big question, and I guess we'll come back to, uh, we'll come back to that before we finish this interview. But um, the, the country itself, and I've been studying the country now since I've, uh, since I've been here, is an amazing country and it, what's unique is they basically everything they do is with a long-term with a long-term purpose and vision and it's very very deliberate actions so they're um, they realize talking about sustainability again they realize that um, oil is a limited resource um, some of them the GDP, the significant amount of the GDP at the moment is from oil, and the uh, the government have put a, a plan in place where they're going to diversify against uh, oil oil revenues, and tourism is uh, a, plays a big part in that. And this country is beautiful. I mean, it is. You've got like Norwegian fjords up in the north. You've got. Uh, I'm just I'm just panning to these beautiful mountains behind. Now, I, and I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you. I, I drove over from Dubai this morning. I spent two weeks in Dubai, which was a very interesting country. We had a great time there. Everyone treated us really well. Um, but it's basically a flat piece of land with a bunch of buildings on it. Yeah. And then and I, and, I, and honestly, I, I knew about the Musandam. I've seen pictures and stuff, but I didn't have any time to research this. And we're driving over, and I'm just we're going past let mountain range after mountain yeah. range. As we're coming around, I mean, my wife and I both were gasping at almost every promontory. I've and never seen anything like it. It's, ama it's amazing. You go uh, go uh, 30 minutes in a uh, powerboat that way, and you get down to a place called Banda Karan. Mm -hmm. uh, you go um, 35 nautical miles uh, the other direction, you get to somewhere called the Demania Islands. I went there with my family last weekend. White sands, turquoise sea coral reefs turtles swimming around with the you know few people on the few people on the beach and it is a stunning a stunning place so so, so one of the goals here is to is to share that that, that this is 
a, a realistically a great cruising ground that almost no one uses. Absolutely, and that's interesting. Probably, that's uh, that's you know it's in our plan, but that's uh, that's longer term. You know? Well, it's not. Look, it's it, it, if if this place reminds me of anything, it's actually the Baja Peninsula of California. Yeah. Hey, it's it's almost identical geology. It's gorgeous. It's got the crags. It's got the beautiful water. Yeah. And they've done the same thing. The the the, the, the Mexican government has spent, you know, uh, billions of dollars building a network of marinas. Yeah. Um, but they're not, you know, they, they, they stopped, they didn't do the, the cultural part trying to actually get the Omanis involved. They just built the marinas, usually with American developers, and said, come to our marinas. Yeah. You know, you guys don't have, uh, 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 you know, a 300 million person rich country next door to send cruisers over, though. So you've got to look further afield, which obviously uh, comes into your, your programs. Let's, let's talk about those. Um, so, so the extreme 40s, probably the highest profile course racing boat that there is right now. Um, and now, last year, a first and a third place. Have you seen that translate into a more tourism, b more pride, um, c more people wanting to get to get their kids involved in Oman sale? Yes, no. Are we, sorry, go. It, uh, it comes in regards to more tourism. Obviously, it is a tool. It is it's a tool that will uh, drive more tourism. Into into the country so like we're promoting a brand as well other than just promoting but doing well in the extreme 40s and then coming back to your earlier question it's like what what's the vision how can we accomplish our targets in the next 5 10 15 25 years maybe maybe more than that but if looking back for the last three years or two years and a half how much have we accomplished and that's right in regards to uh, tourism basically yeah yeah and in regards to other aspects yeah, I mean, I, I mean, what about it? Is it does it immediately translate, or do you have to go to extreme forties for five years to see it turn into something? No, I mean, basically, people who enjoy sailing, demographics A's and B's, they're a bit more, they're a bit wealthier. That's a fact. Absolutely. And Oman's looking more for the discerning tourist, and have people come here on the back of uh, on the back of us campaigning extreme forties? Sure, they have. How many? We haven't got a clue. Sure. But it, you know, that part of it, Fair that enough. part of it is working for sure. Fair enough. Let me just shut this off for a second. We'll shift gears again here, guys. Uh, this marina, I don't remember the name of it. What's it called again? Marina Bandar Roda. Okay. Marina Bandar Roda. Bandar Roda. Okay. I heard this is the only marina in the country, at least until the wave came in. Is that right? Uh, so far, yeah. It's a, it's a full setup marina with all uh, the facilities uh, needed. But then we've got other marinas coming up. Which one is uh, Shangri-La by the hotel? And what's the what's the I mean, I, you know, uh, Omanis are, are fishermen. I think a lot of fishermen in, in, in Oman. Great fishing, great tuna um, that I've tasted. I think today. Um, but uh, uh, what's the traditional way to go? Is it do you just launch boats off the beach? Is it a, a nation of small launches? Well, I mean, uh, it's a fisherman's country first of all. I mean, we've got a coastline of 1,700 kilometers plus, with a po overall population of three million. So. You know, so there's a lot of space for a lot of people, but then fishermen villages come back in for years and years, and we've got untouched uh, spoil. Like just next to this marina, we've got another small little city down there called uh, Haramel. Haramel, and it's basically a, it's a small bay with just fishermen boats on it. The same thing on the way from here down to Muscat, you've got some couple of fishermen bays, and that's where they launch their boats from. And, and yeah, they, they pull them up the beach. 